And what was your um, technique for, you just put your arms around her and kind of lift her up like this? Would you get her and sort of uh, carry across the, uh, the I would Usually, usually I grab her around. Uh, if she was really big, I would spit on my hands and stick it to her lower back. <laughs> and then you'd pick her up around the waist, you'd wrap her legs around your waist. Then you'd slide your hands underneath her 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 quads and then hoist her over wow. your head. Yeah. There you I, go, man. I have so. the image of Dante uh, spitting in his hands like, uh, like John Henry <laughs> would do before you get a pickaxe. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so Start funny. Robin, like, yeah. You know what? If I had chalk, I would have used chalk, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no smelling bag. sauce. <laughs> right, yeah. What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian TJ Miller. He's here to discuss what items we need to be a man, what's the right confidence to have that attracts women, what happens when a woman doesn't live up to your sexuality. And I hate to say it, but we're going back to Ace one more time. But just in a way that we, we explain how it applies in real relationships. Um, this was a real good one. Harry, talk to me. Yeah, man, it was a real good one. We got to talk a lot about, you know, working on yourself, working on your relationship. And uh, if you love what we did on the on the uh, regular show here, we also continue our conversation with TJ Miller over at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. That's where we do all our bonus content, including listener mail. And the bonus show we do every week and this week's show, we continue our conversation with TJ Miller as we talk about uh, setting sexual boundaries and what to do when a woman doesn't feel good about herself, when your partner doesn't feel good about themselves. It's a really great one. And also, uh, if you want to support the show in other ways, you could uh, always email at me. Email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com if you need a relationship consultation. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, Square Pimper Gage? GYB, we get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Um, like, uh, like so many times before, this is a special show, and I've said that uh, five or six hundred times before, but this time I mean it, because we have a, uh, 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 we have a special guest. Look, and he's giving us the whole the whole I'm loop changing, right I'm cha- I decided I'm going to change my background. That's fine. That's, That's fine. fine. Uh, what's going on, Harry? You good? Hey, man, Dante, I'm living the life, getting better, getting stronger. How are you doing now? You, you had, you had uh, a bionic, am, bionic yeah, limbs put in. What was going on? $6 I'm million. A, dollar I look more literate. I'm a, I'm a super. Oh, yeah. yeah, you do. You absolutely do. You got super. books in there, but we don't know what books. We got to zoom in and see what books they are. Because <laughs> that. If you got mind conf and where's Waldo? That could be. <laughs> where's conf and mind Waldo? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I uh, I got the, I went and got the, I went to Tijuana and got the super soldier serum, man. Um, I'm excited. I uh, so what is that? So first of all, uh, let's introduce our guest so you can get in it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of my good friends, one of the funniest dudes I know in the game. Um. And uh, modest about it, too, which is weird. Uh, you don't see that a lot. Give it up for my good friend, TJ Miller, y'all. What up, T? Hello. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you guys. This is exciting. You look you look like an intellectual now. Buy your mm. bookcase and shit. Look at this. I'm, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, but I have my... Oof. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was that a, a decanter or are you, are you yeah. selling liquor now? Decanter. <laughs> Oh, I only nice. sell I only sell uh, uh, peanut butter and hot sauce. All right, all right. So nice. There's what I sell. You can get it on Amazon.com. <laughs> TPB and J peanut butter. Okay, and then uh, I also sell TJ's choice hot sauce. And, really, uh, both amazing. They're very good. How did you do that? How did you get into that? I like you're a big hot sauce dude. Yeah, huge hot sauce guy. And I went to. Um, do a Mucinex commercial when I was the Mucinex man. Yeah, yeah. And um, the it, I was I was visiting my mother in law. I was in the middle of Indiana, and they said we need you to record. And I said, well, I'm you know in central Indiana. So they found an audio engineer recording. It was in this guy's barn, and mm. so I went out there and I did the the recording. He said, you're so funny. He goes, do you like hot sauce? I said, I love hot sauce. He says, I make my own hot sauce. Mm-hmm. You want to see my pepper farm? So she shows me the pepper patches. 
And it was just really interesting. And then we kept in touch. And then one day he said to me, would you ever want to collaborate on a hot sauce? And I go, fuck, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> right, I never right. thought of it, you know? So then we did that. And after a while, that was so successful. I said, you know, I love peanut butter. And I found this, uh, again, in Indiana, this family business called Be Happy Peanut Butter. And uh, and so I reached out and then I collaborated with them. Mm-hmm. So I have three different peanut butter flavors, cherry chocolate, oh, uh, wow. dark chocolate and coconut, and then uh, toffee crispy with toffee milk, chocolate, almonds, sounds, and rice krispies. That sounds dope. That sounds amazing. Holy shit. <laughs> you can get it on Amazon.com. I want all your listeners to hook themselves up with hot sauce and peanut butter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to order some today. Fuck that. I'm but the, uh, the decanter... I was going to talk about this. Is like, do we need accoutrement to make ourselves feel more like a man? You know, and do you? You know, I I wear a Rolex, and I think that makes me feel like my father because he always wore Rolexes. Uh-huh. And I think about that. You know, how much of what we wear and and own and all that contributes to us feeling like a man when deep down you don't need any of that shit to well, be a yeah. guy. Yeah, 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 but I think it's sort of like so. Um, so I I went through. Uh, well, let me let me let me back up a little bit. We were talking about. So I went out to Tijuana, and I um. Yeah, what's I, the serum? So I went for stem cells. I went for stem cells. Wow. Uh, I um I have really bad back from picking up uh four hundred pound women when I used to strip, and my back is shot. Um, and then I had uh. I had uh what you call happen. Um I, I had uh bad knees, my knees went to shit. I mean, I'm also 57 years old, so we're still, you know, we're talking about I'm not no spring chicken, but I mean, you know, it, you're it's, also power lifting. Let's not forget power that. Lifting. A lot. If you go back through your youth, there's a lot of if you if you yeah, can rewatch can you, it. Can we- can we just go back to picking up 400 pound women when you're stretching? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. You just, you just kind of glossed over that. Like that was, you know, just a day in the life. Of Dante. <laughs> he'll do that. TJ, he'll that do about? that shit. He'll do that shit. You know, when I went to college for fencing on a fencing scholarship, I, I ate this sandwich that was really good. No, no, Dante, forget the sandwich. Go back. We, you did what? What well, was the strip? And what's, what is all that about? So, I, you know, every, I mean, the fans and everybody knows that I was a male stripper for 10 years. And uh, and I was a, a personal manager for some young ladies at some point in time. And the later portion of that is uh, how I refer to it as a personal manager. And uh, and so one of the things so one of the things you you have to do to understand attraction as a male stripper is you have to understand how women think. I mean, and that's kind of what the inception of the podcast was, even when there was no podcast. Um, if you don't know how women think, you can't you can't make any money because if you don't connect with them in a real in a real sense. So uh, you're on the, on this kind of sexual sense, then they don't they don't pay you money. And so I spent 10 years doing that. And one of the things about women are pretty shitty to each other. Um, and, um, and, and I guess because it's, it's they're in competition um, in the sexual oh, marketplace. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the things that I always say is that um, men hunt, but women trap. Um, and if you trap, you know, you got to have the right bait. Right. So, you know, certain certain things. I mean, when you even when you fish, you got to have the right bait. You have to understand what the bait is. And so the attractiveness of women is what their bait is. And so I think it puts this real competitive, puts a really competitive nature, uh, nature between women. And um, and so a lot of times I think women treat women horribly a lot of times because of there's always competitive nature. And when you pick up a, uh, you know, and there's always this fitness and, uh, you know, fit, feminine and and uh, friendly um, and men always find that attractive. And if you if you're performing and you're trying to attract women and you pick up a 400 pound woman and you show her some love, it makes you accessible to everybody else in the room. Cause it, cause even the chick who's two fifty, she's like, well, if he, if he likes that bitch, I, I got a shot. Right. 
And so it's a, it's a, it's about the subtext of your performance that is you're constantly communicating something in the subtext of what your performance is. Um, the other thing is that uh, if, so I, my character as a male stripper was this kind of, it was this kind of African warrior kind of that would fuck everybody in the room. <laughs> and, and it didn't that matter. Like a lot of your characters, don't no, yeah, it, it was. was, uh, it was uh, I used to be a French prince would... who would fuck everybody in the room, and then <laughs> I, I was, was actually an a, cho I was later... a chocolatier. I was a chocolatier who would also. Fuck I, uh, <laughs> and later on, you personally managed to give all these women cuddling. Let's continue. Yeah, fair, fair, fair enough. Uh, and so that the subtext of your what the, what we don't understand, I think we don't understand as men a lot of times, is that there's a constant subtext of our actions and what we do that's happening, a non-communicate, non-verbal communication that's going on that we don't check. I mean, we understand it in the context of if you're in a bar and you bump into a guy and spill your drink on him, you you can tell that he wants to fuck you up by, his, you know, his fists are clenched, his, his, our, his forehead is furrowed his his chest is buffed it's like we're we are primates whether we want to realize it or not and those things that we do um communicate aggression or so but um i don't think that men really tap into the fact that there's a sexual communication a subtext to what our behavior our physical behavior is our body language and so that that uh communicates um you know, attraction in ways that we don't understand. So when I would, you know, just the, the point of how it relates to the, to the show is, so when I was stripping, I would take a 400, 500 pound woman and pick her up and live her. First of all, it, communica it communicates a bunch of things. It com communicates my strength, a certain level of masculinity. And it also could subtext is that if she is considered by standards, uh, that she's a four or five hundred, that she's sexually unattractive. The fact that I am willing to give her that kind of attention s s communicates a subtext, it communicates to a woman that every everybody is open for business. You know, anybody can catch it. And what was your um, technique for you just put your arms around her and kind of lift her up like this? Would you get her and sort of uh, carry across the, the uh, I would usually, usually I'd grab her around. Uh, if she was really big, I would spit on my hands and stick it to her lower back. <laughs> and then you'd pick her up around the waist. You'd wrap her legs around your waist. Then you'd slide your hands underneath her 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 quads and then hoist her over wow. her head. Yeah. There you I, go, man. I have so. the image of Dante uh, spitting in his hands like, uh, like a John Henry <laughs> would do before you get a pickaxe. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's so Start funny Robin, like, yeah. you know what if i had chalk i would have used chalk but uh, you know it is, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> smelling sauce <laughs> right, yeah uh, that was that was my stripper character was uh <laughs> an old-timey billiard player yeah. Yeah. who would fuck everybody in the room yeah, yeah. who, who would, would have intercourse with anyone with a pussy <laughs> just anything <laughs> no nah. Uh, it's interesting how your choice of intercourse would, and pussy. I like how you. you there's a difference. <laughs> well, I realized I try to keep it classy. And then I was like, well, this is the man. Uh, <laughs> as Dante knows, one of my favorite theories that he ever had was shoplifting the pussy. Oh, and yeah. Kate, <laughs> Kate uses that all the time. Kate, my wife Kate, really thinks that's hilarious. I have the image of TJ taking that little chalk and tipping the end of his dick with it. That blue chalk <laughs> right before. Happens. Yeah, do it. Then I'm, I'm put, and I'm just sinking balls with that. Thing. Now, now we don't know where I am. Yeah. He also screws it on too. He's, he's got it. He's got his own exactly, stick. Yeah. He's got his own cue. Yeah. Um, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but I, I went down. You went to Mexico, yeah. And uh, and I went to the talk to the guy, and, and just so anybody knows, if anybody wants to, is interested in it. I will talk to anybody about it because it's been really amazing. So I went down to Tijuana. I, I went. I, I flew down to San Diego and they drive you across the border and they do uh, stem cells. I had my knees done. I had my lower back done, my lumbar reason, and I've had my shoulder done. 
um, conversely, there's some guys who went down. There was a 71 year old dude that went down there and had his dick done. Had it stem cell? Yes, I, I, I'm, I supposed to fix ED as Wait, well. So what do they just inject the stem cells into your back, or what? What is into? The yeah, well, they go into the into the, so it builds cartilage or whatever. First of all, the first thing I'm going to say is America sucks balls. I did six MRIs. Six MRIs in Tijuana cost me eight hundred bucks. I, I I did MRIs for almost seven hours of MRIs. Cost me eight hundred bucks, and mind you, that's MRIs with with X rays. So they did X rays first to see where they needed to go. MRIs, and then they did the MRIs. So I Were you my- worried at all about sort of uh, you know the quality of the care because it was Mexico? I I was, but this was this was uh, CPI. CPI was uh, um, is the guy that uh, that Rogan has talked about before. Um, Ed Clay uh, and uh, and Scotty, who who they you know they do a lot of MMA guys. That's why I kind of spoke to him and I I uh, had a conversation with a few MMA guys who actually went down there. Um, I was a little you know that our understanding of Tijuana is you know like the donkey show. And, right. uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, it was not like that any at all. I mean, it was I mean, it's it's like when people talk about going to Africa and they don't understand that there's huge cities and whatever. You know, it's just our, our understanding. But I went down there. I had my knees done. Um, my both knees done. I did uh, 30, 30 million stem cells in each knee. I did Whoa. 60 million in my lower back uh, for my vertebrae and I did my shoulder 30 million. And then I did 50 million stem cells intravenously as well. And do they just get these from the children that the Democrats are having sex with in the basement? <laughs> pizza um, the pizza shop. No. Well, so actually the difference is so, and, and it's funny you mentioned that because the, the, uh, you know, all that time when George Bush was in office and then there were all the evangelicals that were screaming and hollering about stuffing babies into your knees yeah, yeah, and your yeah, back, yeah. which is, you know, the unborn fetuses and all kinds of stuff, um, which is why the FDA does not allow to the extent that what they're doing to Tijuana, um, which is uh, they take the stem cells from umbilical cords. So uh, I see. I mean, it, in in the states, what they do now is they go into your fat cells or they go into your bone marrow, and they they get the stem cells from there. But I'm I'm if you're 50 years old already, who wants some old ass stem cells that are already tired? <laughs> My stem cells got bad knees and bad backs. I mean, why do I want that? I want some some new fresh stem cells that are ready to work. You know? Right, right. Oh, that's so amazing! Wow, bizarre. I I have never known anybody who's done that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm 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 really I'm really advocating. So I mean I've watched I saw some crazy shit, DJ. I mean, um the old guy who also had his dick done, he also was a he was a guy who uh he he picked up granite for years, like he did uh kitchens and stuff like that, and his back was shot. Okay. And I mean so when did he did you two exchange war stories. Where um, he was like, how'd you hurt your back uh, lifting up granite? Uh, for, <laughs> how about you? Did you get to uh, see his dick? That's what yeah, I want. That's I, the other I, thing. You know, I, uh, you know, as as open minded as I like to be, nah. But I did. I did. His, my, his wife was there, and she had her knee done, and uh, you know, she said he had a nice package. But supposedly, wait a least, minute. Wait a minute. She he had his dick done, and she had her knees done. Yeah. I mean, so, you I know, don't know what their favorite right, activity yeah. hey, listen, is combined. Perfect, perfect. I am not judging. Uh, but, uh, he literally, uh, she said to me that after the day after this, the, the procedure, he, she said he, first time he had gotten up and just got up and stood up out of bed in 20 years. Um, wow. uh, I know guy, there were people who were walking around who weren't walking around before. I mean, some people had a rougher time because sometimes it gets worse before it gets better, but um, and they're, and they're doing some great things where they're actually starting to um, do uh, designer stem cells where there's stem cells specifically for cartilage. Uh, there was a young girl there that did a facelift 
So, well, I'm not a facelift, but she's had stem cells in her face to create the elasticity in her in her wow. skin under the neck. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, they also treat cancer, and um, I'm actually trying to get Keith Robinson to go for. So, you know, Keith had two strokes, and they do stroke. Keith, they had a um, a lot of that. I was talking to. So, you know, I always get down dirty. I was hanging out with the with the Mexican dudes that were doing all the ground transport. Uh, and I was like, yo, well, what's the real deal with this? And they were like, yo, I've seen guys come here, come down here in walkers and then and w- literally come back on the follow up um, because I go back again in, in from three to six months and they come back walking upright and stuff like that so really yeah so i'm i'm all about it man i'm all about it and uh and you feel you feel better right now my i'm gonna my back so i had a thing where i couldn't if i walk and harry will testify this if i walk a block i'm i have to bend over because i have uh so much so the spasms in my lower backs are so bad um, but also yeah, my knees tough. walking up the stairs and walking. Now my back is not, I don't see a significant difference, but I'm also supposed to, supposed to take it easy for the next six weeks. But I will say when I got home, I walked up the stairs, I had no pain in my knees. And, um, uh. I was, I was really achy after the, uh, after the, um, the, the procedure and me and another guy, uh, guy, this guy, Mark is his ex-football player um we went to eat we went to this restaurant to eat and i took a fall uh and banged my knee up and i was really in pain all night had a rough time sleeping and uh bam i i i woke up the next day put ice on my ice pack and i was i felt no pain at all from the knee bang the next day um i have no pain in my shoulder at all um, I'm still pain, not pain in my back, but I still spasm up, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited to go back. I'm excited about the procedure because I just think that they're really hiding this from us, you know, the fact in that, the States. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, which I mean, a lot of money, there's a lot of money to be made in surgeries that are unnecessary. So and it, the way they charge it. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, just can you imagine what, what, uh, you know, seven out. I mean, I did six MRIs. Um, one guy did seven, um, six MRIs for eight. What was, so I looked at the prices for MRIs out of pocket is anywhere from 15 to three thousand dollars for MRIs. And uh, so it would have been 10 grand, it would have been 10 grand for the uh, for Just the to uh, get some pictures because yeah, and it's that much anymore. Yeah, it's I'm not, stopped. you know, I could say what I paid in terms of the, the plan that I took was about 26 grand. 26 about 26 yeah but that's i mean if you've got that money you gotta spend it yeah you know? yeah it's, you gotta give it your life yeah, yeah yeah and I, and that's what my thought was you know i gotta my son is before in in mid-august and i i really want to just walk him i just want to take him to the zoo and walk around and, and take him to the zoo yeah. but it's, it's funny you talk about the rolexes and stuff like that i mean even your posture, you know, there's a one of the things that I've, I used to say this about a, a lot is that, you know, Artie, you know, Artie Fuqua, yeah. Artie's funny dude. Uh, Artie was one of the dudes so that that um got caught up in the Tracy Morgan Walmart truck. Yeah, thing, yeah, and yeah. he was in a coma. But Artie has always had his movements like he's bounces around like crazy. So he has very youthful movements and. And Artie's 50 years old, 50 plus years old. And Artie constantly uh, is talking to, has always talked to younger girls. Younger girls have always found him attractive because his his movement is very young. It's very, like he bounces off the walls all the time. And it's it's kind of a youthful, he has a very youthful movement. And I think that subtext is interesting that women, I mean, Artie's a good looking guy, he dresses great. I mean, but I mean, he's always, even uh, even when we started to slow down as we got older and whatever, he's always had this. So I think there's, you know, when you talk about Rolexes, I mean, these are things that kind of give us subtext. I mean, w- walking around with a Rolex, I mean, everybody knows what the, yeah, I mean, wh- I mean, what is a, what does a used Rolex cost? Maybe 15, 17, maybe? It depends. I mean, if you just have a stainless steel Rolex, that's like, it's a little bit more now, but you can get something for $9,000. Nine grand. So it's standing, starting at 10 grand. 
right? Yeah. And it goes all the way up to whatever, whatever. Um, so, but I think there's it's the status symbol that says, uh, I mean, what is it saying that I have a that I have a watch that's twenty thousand dollar watch? No, it says the subtext is that I'm a person who is very serious about providing. I have created a certain level of of financial stability through my work and through through my hard work and my dedication and my stick to itness. I mean, I, I I mean, I think on the surface they go, oh, it's a Rolex and women are gold digging, but that's not really what it is. It's a subtext you about know, I don't safety. Think so. And it's interesting too because <clears throat> I think what and just to say the Rolex thing, what your what kind of watch you have, and you can do this with cars, uh-huh. says a lot about your values. Right. And that's really interesting to me. First of all, not all men wear watches. Right. I think if you wear an Apple Watch, you're a fucking dork. It looks like you're a dork. Yeah, it's not sorry. cool. Eh, what you I'm do? sorry. It's, it's true. All right. But I got but, a cool, I do have a cool brace. Yeah, I have yeah a cool exactly. Band. So you're good. You're good. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, if you've got a yellow gold diamond that, that says that yeah. your values are in line with a certain type of that's I want people to look at me. I want people right. to know I need attention. I want people to know that I'm wealthy. And a Rolex like this uh-huh. says I I spent a lot of money on a watch, but I am I'm this is sort of a blue collar Rolex. Right, right. And then this particular Rolex, and I didn't I got in the beginning before it was it's called the Hulk, which I hate that nickname. Mm-hmm. But this is an almost impossible to find Rolex. Uh-huh. And so it also says, and and guys will notice that, of course, much more than women. Right. But it also says, I find things uh, that require a lot of taste and a lot of hard work and dedication. Right. right. And so I have a certain, you know, you you say, oh, I'm a, I'm a man who not only has money, but has taste. Right. And I think right. that's important to a lot of women. And if you're, if those are the values, then you're going to get a higher quality woman I who's agree. sort of pursuing you or open to being pursued by you. Right. So you can wear a lot of that on yourself. If you're wearing a shirt that says Armani Exchange, you're going to get a certain type of right. woman who right. really just values money and brands right. and that stuff. Right. But if you wear a psycho bunny shirt or something like that, then you're right. going to get a girl, a certain kind. So I think what's interesting is it doesn't just say certain things about you. It's going to attract certain Absolutely. types of women. Absolutely. And Absolutely. you've always got to think about that when you're making decisions about how you present yourself. Right. I, well, you know, what's interesting is that I have a friend of mine that, uh, and you can't shoplift the pussy. Can't shoplift the pussy. Can't shoplift. Uh, right. Well, I mean, you you rep, but you know, it's interesting when you talk about the shoplift the pussy. Here's a situation where you present as a Rolex wearer. But here's the funny thing about that: if you present as a Rolex we- wearer, but uh, you are not a Rolex guy, like you there's an incongruency between what you're presenting and what you are. Then the other thing is women will find you instantly unattractive because you're a liar, because they, there's, there's, a, there's a deception. So uh, it's something that just I just thought about when you was thinking about I don't know. Do you ever smoke cigars? Yes. OK, so, you know, one of the psychology of cigars is, you know, you get that big the big long cigar and it stinks yeah. and and it's like it's you know it, it's 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 sort of a like i'm a big fucking deal it's like to hold that big cigar it's you know it's a phallic symbol to a certain extent and it's like i i yes it stinks and i don't give a fuck because i'm important enough and i'm big enough that i can do this and people cannot like it and i don't give a fuck it also says there's a level of confidence that you have because you don't give a fuck about what people think. So anything, even a, even a, even a crazy. It's interesting. T- I never thought about it like that. You know? Yeah. It, it, even if you got a crazy t-shirt or if you, you dress crazy or whatever, the other thing that also you could be communicating, you women will recognize that, okay, this guy is different. That gives him a certain level of social pressure that he has to deal with. And why would somebody want this kind of negative social pressure unless they're confident enough to deal with the social pressure and not give a fuck about it? So it talks about it speaks to a certain rootedness in, in your manhood and, and in the first place, if that makes sense. No, it does. And it's funny. I was just thinking about today how I don't know if it's this brain injury that I have. 
but I really don't give a fuck what other people think about me. It's right, really right, hard right. for me to give a fuck about what people look at. I I was where I went to Florida. <laughs> it's in Southwest Florida, performing uh-huh. in Naples, Florida. And as a joke, I wore an American flag T-shirt. Not even T-shirt, like a button-down. And mm-hmm. then I was wearing matching American flag a swimsuit. Uh-huh. And I was walking around. I just, I'm a huge American flag. I got socks that are right, right, right. And I just kept forgetting that I was in that outfit. Right, right. People would just look at me like I was fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I just couldn't bring myself to really care. And then I would remember, oh, I'm dressed like a fucking lunatic. Right, 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 right. right. And I think you're right that you sort of, if you see a guy walking through the airport like that, and he's not like trying to be cool. Yeah, he's yeah. He's just walking That's through the airport. Just being is, then, just is. Th- then that is, yeah. Women are going to go, "What the fuck? That guy is so confident." Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think that, yeah, I I never really thought of it like that. But you also, you also want to be different enough. You want to dress differently or carry yourself differently, different enough to sort of have people notice you. Yeah, but it's that balance. Of not going to a place where, hey, look at me. You know, right. it's just, I think women in general, a guy who's trying to, trying too hard, immediately that's such a turnoff because yeah. these women are kind of like, that's not a confident person. Right, right. And like we've said over and over, confidence is the most attractive thing. I think mm-hmm. sense of humor is the thing that women are looking for, but they're more attracted to confidence. And if you really look at it, uh, guys that are really funny, there is mm-hmm. a confidence in that because yeah. they're going to try and say the joke and they don't care if it bombs. Right. They're going right. to be, they're going to be interjecting because they don't care if it's, they don't care how it's received. They've right. decided that they want to make the joke. And I think not to completely talk about this, but like, I think that women, I've always said this and the media fucking turn it around on me because they're mm-hmm. fucking assholes. Yeah. But I feel really strongly that women um they they're taught to suppress their sense of humor early on yes. because they don't they the society doesn't want them to appear more confident than the men that they're around and right. so if the girl's funnier than a guy on a first date the guy's going to be intimidated right. so he's not going to want to go out a second time because he is, he feels like he's already down a peg with this woman right and so i think that you also want to be a guy who's confident enough that if the woman is being funny, if she's making jokes, just hang with that and give right. her the space to be funny. And that's something that, that these you know women who are funny appreciate it so much. Yeah, yeah. And that's how you're going to shop with the pussy, right? You know what I mean? Well, you don't. I just, you're not. Well, I, wait, you, I just, I just, I just don't the opposite. It it, yeah, yeah. I just keep saying it over and over again. You just like, like the phrase, you know. You like and the and phrase, here's the right. thing: if you get a great car, but it's not a Lamborghini and it's not a Ferrari, but it's a Jaguar. Then you'll be shoplifting the pussy. When you go and you you shoplift the pussy at the dealership, then you're gonna you're gonna okay, drive out of there shoplifting <laughs> the pussy. Slam on the brakes. So I want I want to understand. I just don't get it at all. I, I know. Okay, I, Jay, I think so, you're, I think you're talking about literal shoplifting. I think you're missing the. <laughs> so here's, the point let me explain the shop so you understand. It's you having to steal something that you don't deserve. Yeah, I know. When you the, shoplift the pussy, you're paying for some guy. To put the pussy in a supermarket and then you go there and you don't pay for that, it. That's not it at all. That is I got it. I know what it's all about. <laughs> I got you. It's it's more like I know I don't have the money in my pocket, so I steal it. And then I I, I hope I don't get caught. I don't I hope I don't get exposed. But you know what's what's interesting about uh, uh even about that, you know, you and, and I, you know, it, it, what's great about the internet is this idea of cancellation is is Somebody else can't decide. Other people can't. The powers that be can't really decide that you're canceled anymore because people get to make a choice about you on the Internet. People get to make a choice and to see the nuance. And and even if they're offended, you can explain it and you can have a dialogue where they where they can define what you say and tell you, well, no, this is what you meant. They can they can shoplift your pussy. Eggs. Oh, absolutely. They can shop. What's what's <laughs> also interesting is that and, you know, when people you hear comics have said women are not funny. Right. 
which is just yeah, not true that's, because yeah, we, not true. we that's just not true. But I will say this. The, the women are that are funny are women who don't give a fuck, who innately are women who go. This is what I think is funny. I'm saying it and I'm comfortable with it and I'm not. So, I, you know, there's there's the women who are unfunny are the ones who are going all oh. like something yeah, happens. Yeah. Somebody slips on the banana peel and they go, oh, what? It, what it, that is not that is not my wife. No, my wife, the funniest thing in the world is when somebody gets hurt in a cartoon <laughs> way. I step on a rake and it hits me in the fucking forehead. She's all in. She loves it. Can I ask you a question? Sure, I know sure. we're, we're having a fun time. I know we have limited time. So I, I wanted to ask this. I was with a girl, and this is a long time ago. I was with a girl, and she just didn't ever give me fellatio. She just wouldn't really go down on me. I'm always, every time we're having sex, I'm going down on her. That's okay. like, and in my life, that is something that I consider almost a prerequisite. If you're going to have sex with this girl, you're going to go down on her for right. at least enough time to get it going. Right. And maybe even longer to get her to climax once mm -hmm. before you even get into the sex, you know, right. Right. those are all those options are always on the table. Right. And they're always being done. And I just was never getting fellatio. I was never getting okay. a blowjob. You weren't getting just, return on your investment, basically. I think that's a great way of putting it. Right. And, my thing was she was a she gave you a crypto blowjob. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. Like very little ROI. She was giving you a shit coin blowjob. I wanted a Bitcoin blowjob. She's giving me a fucking Doja coin blowjob. So the issue to me was when she would give me a blowjob, it wasn't a great blowjob. It, it was reluctant. Well, not even reluctant. It just wasn't great. It was a lot of the Lake David tell us such a funny joke on his roadwork special about this. But, you know, it was the licking and it was just not a professional blowjob. Mm -hmm. And then one day uh, I did something very significant for her in terms of making her feel safe. She had a bad experience when she was younger, sexually okay. giving a blowjob in a car mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I made her feel safe in in that same context, but obviously in present day. Right. And then that night she came home and she gave me a porn. Greatest you know, blowjob. Pornhub.com yeah. level blowjob. Just yeah. a fucking pro porn yeah. star blowjob. Right. And it blew my mind. It was fucking amazing. Right. And then she never did it really again. Okay. So here we know. I'm like, okay, I know that she's amazing. And going mm -hmm. down on a guy, she knows exactly what the fuck she's doing, right. but she's not doing that even when she is giving right. head in general. And so I wondered your thoughts on that, because, oh. you know, if you say if, if 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 I said to her, hey, you know, you gave me this incredible blowjob. Why aren't you doing that again? That kind of really turns a woman off in the sense of they go. Oh, what are you? Uh, was it tit for tat? Just because you're going down on me, I have to go down on you. You know, it's it's a difficult subject to broach, and I just wanted your guys' thought on that. Oh, love, this is a perfect question. So, number one, um, I think you have to put yourself and your happiness first because if you don't, nobody else will. So, the thing about that is, um, uh, and, and the reason why I say that is because a lot of times women, are, I mean, just culturally, they're they're evaluating you. Right. This is it's a, it's you because they're you're hunting them. And so they get to say thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever and and whatever. And when they engage with you, I think that there is a um, this kind of idea. Well, you can't say this, so you can't say that. Um um the uh so there's a few things about this question number one is why wouldn't you say that why wouldn't you say it? first of all if if blowjobs is so i i did go back to i say that this relationships are really easy it's understanding what your non-negotiables are and then never negotiating them and if there is blowjob if a blowjob or just an openness of sec open sexuality in a relationship is important to you, then why can't you say that? 
Um, and why should you why not have a discussion about that? Your level of honesty to the fact that this is something that is 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 important to you. Then what do you do? Then you, what do you do? You just you you marry this woman and then and not get a good blow job for the rest. Of, I mean, like, why would you why would especially if it's a deal breaker? Um, and also, it's interesting because I women are not shy about letting you know what they don't like. Oh, they don't give a fuck. If you don't like yeah. they don't like what you you're gonna know it. If yeah. they fall out of love with you, you're getting dumped. If they I always say a woman only dates a guy who she thinks is better than her. Now better is a relative term. It's a it's a relative term. Like people get all up in arms when I say that, but the, what I'm saying is better from her perspective. She gets to decide what where she's at and what is better. So um, if you're funny or you're interesting or you don't give a fuck or I mean, I, I, I use this analogy when I was in my 20s, I was dating this uh, um, this woman who was 40, early, early 40s, and she was much older than me, but she had her life together, the condo and a BMW and a this to that, to that, to that, to that. But what she liked about me was I didn't give a fuck about anything. And I kind of felt like it was all going to work out. And so when somebody went, when, you know, if. if if she forgot to pay the electric bill a one day later, she was panicking. What am I going to do? And we, I was like, well, we'll go pay it. Let's, we'll just take a ride and go pay. It. Like, what the fuck are you? What are you? And so even though she had, and I was, I was staying, I was at home sleeping on, uh, sleeping on a futon in my mom's basement and nothing, but what she, I think what she admired about me was the fact that I did, was not bothered by any of these external well, stimulus. And not, well, I'm not, th <clears throat> not thrown by them. So right, I, I exactly. find a lot of women, if they have anxiety and you don't have yeah. those anxieties, right. that's really you creating a stable environment, which right. is what women want two things. They want to be provided for and they want an environment that feels Thanks. stable. That feels and safe. that's the thing that I've struggled the most with with Kate is that she's really had a hard time in part with feeling like I create environments or the environments that I have us in are not stable. And it took a while for me to, and for her specifically, in fact, this is her. Um, can we pause real quick? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. sure, sure, sure. Okay. Let me pause. Give me one second. Okay. So that's a great example of Kate has COVID right now. Right. And I easily could have said, all right, I'll call you back. But by putting this on hold and putting her before makes her feel anybody else, confident. it makes her feel like she's the most important thing to me, which she is. Right. But it also helps her understand that I'm a provider, that she's sick right now. And so I'm putting her especially right now ahead of other people. I did this thing, you know, you did stem cells. I basically went to Arizona to get stem cells for the brain. Kate and I were having mm. the same fight over and over again. And she got, I got a bit about it, but she got us this um, famous couples therapist named Terry Real. And so I read his books sort of in preparation for the session, almost to get ready to fight with him, to get mm -hmm. ready to spar with him, which might be part of my problem in the relationship. <laughs> And uh, he, his book, it's called Us, and it was pretty genius. Not all, he's sort of anti-masculinity, anti-individuality, which I think those things are bullshit. Yeah. But he, one thing he said is, and it's just so brilliant. He said, when your partner is airing their grievances, don't take that time to air yours. Wait until the next day. Mm -hmm. And I was so fucking genius. And nobody mm -hmm. ever has even comes up with that because right. she says, you know, you, you said you were going to text me. You said you'd be home by nine. You're home at nine thirty. It's like, well, you know, I have to work for a living. So oh, I, I like to enjoy myself after I finish working. I'm sorry if I didn't come in. Well, uh, you don't think it's work cleaning up after you? They're just going back and forth. And, mm -hmm. and nobody feels heard and nobody's listening. Right. 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 And so we didn't end up working with this guy, but he told us to go to this thing called PCS. And we did. We went to an intense, it's called an ITP, intensive therapy program. Mm -hmm. It was fucking amazing. We did 87 hours of therapy in seven wow. days. Wow. So it's one week. You, you work from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., 12 hours a day mm -hmm. with like between 20 and 25 different therapists. Right. And you do one year, five months, and three weeks of therapy in one in seven days. It's wow. amazing. And 
what one of the things that we it's it's the two psych models they use are trauma so trauma therapy and then whichever that's everybody's everything right now and the other is circles of intimacy it's sort of boundary theory and what they say you just what you said reminded me what they say is in the other circles you're in the middle of the circle you put yourself first then the mm-hmm. second circle is 2a and 2b 2b mm-hmm. is if you have kids the kids but 2a is your partner Right, And then three can be family and really close friends. Four mm-hmm. is sort of just news, sports, and weather. You know, mm-hmm. not really close to – it goes like that. But what Kate and I have, when we found out, is we had some codependency issues where I was putting her before me, and she was sort of putting me before her. And then mm-hmm. you, you build this resentment to the right. other person. Right. And so you really do have to put yourself first. And instead of women finding that unattractive and seeing it as selfish – Really what they see, they see it as confidence and they see it as strength. Absolutely. You're not going to let anybody walk over, walk all over you, including her. And my father told me this once. I think we maybe have talked about this. We did. Yeah. Yeah. My father told me this once. I'll never forget it. He said, you know, these women who wear the pants in the family, you know, he's a generation older than us. These women that that wear the pants in the relationship, they end up resenting their husband for letting them for not be a man and for not being man enough for not standing up. Well, here. here's yeah. another, another, but that's angle. why you have to put yourself first. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best thing you can do for her. And right. I just didn't understand that. You right. Know? Right. The other thing, the other angle of that is that if, getting those if, big, if, go ahead. if you're, if you're not, <laughs> if you're not, um, if you're not man enough to shut her bullshit down, then how are you man enough to shut me down? Like uh, me, as I'm saying, Don, like if I'm coming at you, if you right. can't handle her bullshit, when I come at you aggressively, then then what what, what are you going to do then? So she can't feel safe in the context. So it's, a, it's something that I also say that when honesty, so, you know, the, 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 the honesty, well, the, the principles of, of the podcast is authenticity, credibility, and empathy. And when I say authenticity, I mean truth and honesty. So if you a liar, right? So when I, I, and, and the majority of my consultations come from guys who just, who, who are supposed to know how to do relationships and sex, but have had no coach, no guidelines, no training, no practice, which is just, it's absurd to hold yourself up to that kind of standard. I mean, you wouldn't even do that when, if it came to ping pong, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't say I'm a great ping pong player. If you had no coach and you didn't play, you never played it before, but somehow relationships and sex is supposed to be something that men are supposed to already know as per how women perceive you in terms of their attractiveness. But what's, yeah. you know, that, which is, which is great, but what's even crazier is that if most guys, 90, 99% of the people I know, people I know are liars. They may not be liars in the context, I'm going to lie to get something from you, but they will lie not to have a confrontation. They will lie to not, to not, um, to hurt somebody's feelings. But the point is, lies, it's just like with Judge, you know, if you watch Judge Judy, once she catches you in a lie, everything you say has no credibility. So if if she says, am I too fat? Do I look fat in this dress? What do you think? And you go, oh, no, you look great. Yes, you're preserving her, but you're a liar, right? It's There's nobody who's fat who doesn't know they're fat. So they're asking you a question that they already know the answer to. Now, I'm not saying you should say you should destroy somebody's like, God damn, fat bitch. Hell yeah, I'm glad you asked me. You don't have to say that. But you could say, yo, you, yeah, you're definitely putting on weight. I mean, I think you're beautiful, but I think you're putting on weight. Now, if I lie about that, or if I lie not to get into a con- uh, not to be confronted or to avoid confrontation, I'm still a liar. And if I'm a liar, when I tell you I love you, when I tell you I'm going to be there for you, how does she believe a liar? Even though the lie may benefit her, it may have benefited her ego or whatever, you're still a liar. You're taking you're taking one step forward with make your feel good, two steps backward with your credibility in right. the relationship. Exactly. Yeah, I, I said to what you said about men are just supposed to understand. I, I realized when I read that book, Us, or listened to it, 
It was so interesting because I realized I go, this is the first book I talk about this on stage. This is the first book on marriage that I've read. Mm-hmm. My marriage, it's the most important thing in my life right. by far. Because I don't have right, kids. Right. And even if I did have kids, the marriage is more important. Okay. Right, right, right. The most important thing in the world. And I had never read a book about it. Guys, <clears throat> I have read thousands, hundreds, uh-huh. maybe thousands of hours about cryptocurrency. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, and, but with with my relationship, I was like, this will figure itself out. Like, yeah. It's just so crazy that you Absolutely. don't educate yourself on that stuff. And I think that's why podcasts like this are so valuable. Thank you, man. Because guys that. also just aren't really thinking about relationships in those terms. No, no. They kind of think about themselves and they think about the relationship and they think about how does the relationship affect me mm-hmm. and how do I affect the relationship? And you don't, and that's one thing that he talks about that I thought was actually pretty good, mm-hmm. but you know, you sort of, you have to think about the relationship as something that you cultivate, that you work on, that you think mm. about, that it's it's something that can be worked on. It's something, mm. and just I I think for, for the sole reason of in America, you kind of are told you should already know how to do this, mm-hmm. and you're also told these are the rules of the game, and you're not allowed to do X, Y, and Z to women or with women. Right. And it puts us all in a really, really tough spot. And I think the strangest thing right now, and I'm so lucky because I don't have to be in that kind of dating world. The strangest thing now is that girls have really painted themselves into a corner. Absolutely. Where you got guys feeling like they got to say, can I kiss you? And And they don't want that. Women women ask for that. Not, Not individual women, but women as a whole. They sort of demand that Mm -hmm. of men and within themselves, they don't want that. They don't want the guy that's like, do you mind if I put my hand on your ass? It just, it just doesn't. And so I feel really bad for this sort of generation of women. And what Kate and I talk about all the time is I think as a man, you can do this. Kate talks about all the time. She says, cause she's an actual, she's a real deal feminist. What she talks about all the time is she says, you know, look like, what she says is she says, look, you know, when did feminism become about equality instead of about um, power? Mm-hmm. And so she said, you know, women, we, sh- we shouldn't be equal to men. OK, we should be allowed to express our strengths in every situation, in every environment, all of it. We should be right. empowered, right. not equalized. Right. Because the, women aren't as good at men as certain things. We're men different. Good at, we're we're different. different. Yeah, And so I think that's another thing is that in a relationship, you point out and give a woman the space to be powerful in the ways that she is. And you compliment those things and you have to cultivate those things instead of saying, you know, you're every bit as smart as me. You're every bit as this as me. You're just like everybody else. You should mm-hmm. be you're on an equal level, which, again, is a lie. It's a lie. Yeah, it's a lie. It's you're, a lie. As, you're every bit as strong as me. No, you're not. You're you're every bit as uh, there are things that you're better at than I yeah, am on both sides. And it's being the, honest yeah. about that is I mean, I think even being honest about what your inequities, what she's stronger than is just as important because on a, and, and we're just talking about the A part of the ace, which is just the honesty. It is to, to there's a confidence in saying, I don't know that. So it's it's just, um I'm I'm make this point, but we gotta wrap up and go to the Patreon side. But so the thing about, uh, you know, this, that guy, Jordan Peterson, right? Yeah. So yeah he, every once in a while, I get a guy who will be in, and yeah. I get how, how there's things that he says that's, that's um, simply fundamentally so. But then when he goes into these nuanced kind of ideas, he never really states his position because that is that's the grift. The grift is I'll never tell you what I really think so you can never hold me down and hold me responsible for what I'm saying. Now, what there's something that I speak to all the time is if I don't understand something, I'm going I don't know. Hey, I don't know what you what was that word you said? Um because not only that but if I'm shoplifting the pussy. Again, 
trying to shoplift the pussy. I'm going to go, what is that? Explain it to me. I'm not, a, because why am I supposed to be, why am I creating a facade of something that's not existing? When, if I ask you the question and you explain it and I have a general understanding, now I am the thing that I was hiding from not being in the first place. It just, it's just that step. So like a guy like Jordan Peterson will make these statements and then he'll, he'll use words and stuff. If I'm talk, if I get, a, if I got a, if I have a lawyer for something, and he's talking in legalese, there's two reasons why he's talking in legalese. Number one, he either a does not want me to understand what he, what he, what he's saying, because for for any reason, he's trying to, he's being deceptive, he's hiding something or whatever, or he is unaware of his surrounding. He has no, no uh, basic. Uh, awareness of uh, of of his self and people he's speaking to, so he's also a guy who I I, I don't want to talk to because I, this is somebody I'm hiring you to get me to a place. Yeah. You should you should talk to me plainly so that meanwhile, I can understand it. Meanwhile, he's just shoplifting the pussy. He so is use shoplifting right? the okay, pussy. Okay. He's right, lying. He's absolutely lying. It, it's a lie. It's he's he's a, he's being a fraud. So when you when you speak in these terms, these undefinable terms, and you you you're giving that so people don't really understand where you're coming from, it's it's either a that you're being deceptive or b that you're totally unaware. Both of which are people that I don't want to fuck with. So yeah. even when I'm on this, I do this podcast, when I do consultations and I do extensively do consultations all the time with guys who don't understand relationships, don't understand women, don't understand attraction, any of those things. And I speak to them plainly and I and I can always tell when they're trying to put on a facade about. And I whoa, 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 look, look, you're paying me money. Tell me what you don't know, so I could I, I could tell you what you need to know. Yeah and, yeah, and and so being deceptive to it, even when you talk about a guy like like Andrew Tate, who is a is right in a lot of the things that he's saying, but he's leaning into this this asshole kind of you know uh, what Harry says is WWE type shit. Yeah, professional that, wrestling. Yeah, he's a, he's a heel <laughs> because it gets clicks, but it doesn't help well, people, anybody. The problem is people don't know that he's doing it. People don't know that he's being sure. a heel. They don't know well, he's, he's messing a, around. He's, he's, he's being a caricature, and <laughs> when these guys present themselves as I know it all, that's not true, because Dante, one of the things I love about you is every, we all know yeah. that when you don't know something, yeah. you're going to freely admit that because yeah. that takes confidence. Yeah. And then they also are presenting a caricature of sort of an alpha male because in, the guys that are watching that in their minds that is an alpha male. Yeah. And really the alpha male is the, I'm not going to say the opposite of that, but they, the real alpha males are not projecting that. Yeah. They're not trying they to project are. that. They just they, are. They just are. Yeah. And that's something that I think Which is, is really your, interesting. Which is your American flag and your Rolex. It just yeah. is. But it just is. And I think the most attractive thing about me to audiences even Mm -hmm. is they can kind of tell that I don't give a fuck. And one of the things that <laughs> makes that really understandable is I get on stage and I'll improvise for half an hour or so. Mm -hmm. It just, it's clear. I'm talking right. to the crowd. I'm not worried about how it's going to go. Right. And I think that that is the most attractive thing for women. Yes. And yeah. so when you project this, I got a big cigar, I've got the dark sunglasses, mm -hmm. I'm in the Gucci suit. I've got I've the got fucking my Bugatti. shoes. Right. I got my Bugatti. It's, mm -hmm. That is not an alpha male because right. an alpha male sees that and, and says, they roll uh, their eyes. They yeah, roll their eyes. You're calm, boy. And the girl wants the guy who looks mm. at that and says, I don't need that. Right. And and I don't want that. Yeah. And I I already have everything I need. That so we have this thing in Los Angeles, in our apartment in Los Angeles. We have this, and I don't put up motivational posters, I don't do any of that mm. shit. But we have this thing, and I framed it. It was actually a tote bag. I fucking framed it. I put it in a frame. Not. It just looks like it. And it just is this bear, like, screaming. And it just says, you have everything you need. And mm -hmm. I think that is one of the most attractive things that you can project yeah. Yeah. is a guy who says, I don't really need anything. Right. I may want things. Right. I may have things that I want. I right. might want more money. I might want cooler clothes. I might, I might want two or three more pairs of sneakers than I or have. Or the Bugatti. You might yeah. want a Bugatti. <laughs> but I don't need, need it. it. 
because yeah. I have everything I fucking need. And to me, if people can tap into that, yeah. that's going to make you pay for the pussy. Yes. Did I do absolutely. that right? Did I do well, it right? You, right? you already earn it. You know, they'll probably you just give it the to pussy. you. <laughs> let's, oh, let's button that up and then we'll do whatever we're going to do on the podcast. I still want to answer the second part to your question as well. Um, what, wanna, is, what do you want to plug? Thank you. Can I, yeah, I want to thank you. I was just about to say. Um, right now, all my socials, Teenage Millionaire on Instagram, not TJ Miller on Facebook, YouTube. Right now, I have a fucking beautiful YouTube special called Dear Jonah. And it's just amazing because this drunk guy heckles me Uh and I finally turn to deal with him and he ends up being developmentally challenged. Okay. He's like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, any other comedian would have handled that differently, but the yeah. way that I handle it, he becomes the star of the entire show. Oh, he's nice. in the whole thing. He says the funniest line. It's amazing. So that's called Dear Jonah. Check oh, that God. out. Let me know that man 202 sent you in the comments. Yeah. And um, that's really come and see my live dates. TJ Miller does not have a website.com. And uh, just <laughs> my YouTube channel is just awesome because I've got so many fucking great clips. I've got a crowd work special coming out i have a san francisco special coming out i have i've got a lot a lot of stuff that's coming to that channel so i'm really excited about that oh, no. and i just want to thank man 202 because they helped man me school get, man school man school i want to thank man school because yeah. uh because you're helping me get those bitcoin blow jobs yes <laughs> there you go. i'm not shoplifting the pussy i get that good cryptocurrency <laughs> store value motherfucker proof of work uh, are you heavy in the Bitcoin too? Are you? I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you. I'm big let's, into Bitcoin, let's... big into Ethereum, and that's it. Let's 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 talk to Harry. Talk to me. Uh, you could go to all my social media at Harry Turjanian to see everything I'm doing, mostly YouTube and TikTok. Uh, also, make sure you follow us over at patreon.com uh, slash manschool202, where we're going to do the bonus content. And we'll do that right now. There we go. Mm-hmm. And if you want any relationship consultations, you could email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Uh, yo, uh, you know all my stuff. Google me, bitch. You know what it is. Uh, Dante Nero.com for consultations. Google me, bitch. It's great. <laughs> Dante Nero.com. Click on consult. You can have a consultation with me. I'm, I'm, get you up to speed. Um, this was, uh, this was dope. This was so dope, TJ. You no, know, we I always have it. a great, we always have a great conversation. But GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasts. Check us on the Patreon. Also, sign up for the Patreon. That's how we keep doing this, keep bringing this content. If you could please. Sign up at patreon.com slash manschool202. Manschool. Uh, we are out. We're going to meet us on the Patreon side. Please, peace, peace, peace.